It just told you I was live. Yes, it did. Except I don't know how to ask people to join. How do you do that? Scott Guadalajara joined. I can see him. Lori joined. Microphone check. I don't even know if anybody can hear me. There's a delay. Hey, Scott. How are you? Waiting for Aaron Kasharski to join us. You can hear me? Cool. Thanks, man. Good. I'm glad to know you're doing good. I told him 2 o'clock his time, so... Yeah, I bet you are. <laughs> so, uh, uh, for those who are watching this video while we wait, um, I'm talking to a friend of mine who um, uh, recently had a child, but he's a... Hey, Christian, how are you? Uh, but he's uh, an old friend of mine since he was a child. I've, I've known him... Um, nearly his whole life uh and he's just become a parent so uh very cool hey warren is here let me interrupt uh warren i'm waiting on aaron to join still um i'm not sure how to invite somebody to this anymore hey warren there you are so warren is producer on the film uh your child is five years old oh since i you were five years old i was like there's no way your kid's five years old did i miss that already so now you're 37. I've known you 32 years. Is that even possible? Wow. That sounds like a long time. Okay, so Warren, where is uh, the guest of honor today, uh, Aaron Kasharski, who is... There he is! Aaron, okay, let me see how to get him on this thing, because we're, we're supposed to be talking with Aaron here. So let me see. How do you do this? You guys, technology. There's Aaron. Aaron, I'm seeing you. I'm trying to get you on board, buddy. Give me a moment. Is it this? Invite people. There you go. Aaron, it says you're unable to join your request. I'm not sure what that means. You're the guest of honor today. <laughs> Scott, that's great, buddy. I'm glad to hear your, your child is good and doing well. Uh, I'm thrilled. Uh, yeah, no, I am not tech savvy. That's the thing. I keep getting these characters where they... <laughs> <laughs> in fact, the character I'm playing for Coffee Breaks is a techie, which is really ironic that uh, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, I used to know what I was doing about 10 years ago. I was a master of technology, but that was before uh, TikTok and all those kids things started going crazy. And uh, like we talked about last time, uh, still waiting for Aaron. Warren, if you can help Aaron figure that out, <laughs> that would be great. Um, Aaron plays Bill in the film, Brad. There, I keep calling him Bill, but Aaron plays Brad in the movie. Um, and so uh, we have some scenes. And in fact, um, this is, Aaron is unable to join. Maybe we're going to have to restart this uh, or something. Let's, let's see what happens. But both of us are, are techies in the film and neither of us know what we're doing clearly. So <laughs> we're going to see what Aaron does. He's supposed to be joining us. Uh, let's see. Aaron, there you are. Okay. All right, Aaron should be live now. Let's see. How do I join? <laughs> well, now it says waiting for you, and now it says you're available to, to join. So, yeah, anyway, that's, that, that's already humorous is that. Right, so that's what happens is the technology moves, and it just outpaced me. I, I didn't keep up with it, and, uh, and I just decided, you know, I didn't need those things. And when I was a model, somebody was like, uh, you need to have Instagram. And I was like, I'm not doing Instagram. What, what, who cares about Instagram? And then uh, uh, the next thing I know, here I am with over 3,000 followers and you wonderful people watching the show. And uh, uh, I, I can't even believe it. Like, so maybe the neglecting of technology, well, I, I'm, I'm sure it has, has, <laughs> has hindered my growth as, as an actor. I, I'm sure that's something. Aaron, we're still waiting on you. Uh, you're, the, uh, you're the guest of honor today. Uh, we're going to be talking about coffee breaks, and Aaron isn't able to join. Okay, so this is, is we're going to try one more time here. Why does it say unable to join, unable to join? I have no idea. 
Aaron, do you, do you try your phone or use a different medium? <laughs> Warren is the producer. He's, uh, he is, uh, I'm sure, very anxious to await this conversation that we are having about Coffee Breaks, which is the movie that is starring, uh, well, starring myself. Um, although I am not the biggest name in the film, I am the star of the movie. And, uh, but Aaron is in the film and we're going to have a discussion, but it's about, the story is about Kellen. Oh, I can hear somebody. There he is. Okay. Um, for some odd reason, for some odd reason, it was only letting me join. It wouldn't let me join from my computer. I was trying to use my computer. I can see you. I can hear you, but hold on, let me set this down. What if that's better? Is that better? Yeah, that's better. And then you have that fun green screen behind you, which we can, uh, which hopefully somebody um, will make into this really cool thing, or you know, I don't know, maybe make you, yeah. you can make, maybe make, make you join the cast of SpongeBob or you know whatever people oh, do yeah. with green screens. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do a lot of live streaming on YouTube, and usually I'll put like a background behind me or something. Right. So, so anyway, welcome. Uh, I, I'm glad you got it figured out. Um, if you want to keep your camera bobbling around, it'll be a lot more like Matt did it. No, I'm teasing. Don't do that. Uh, you don't have a pig hat by chance that you could wear? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, have, I actually, I actually, some of the fans of my YouTube channel bought me this. And when you turn it on. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. It actually, it, it, it does like dollar signs or. Oh, it does all kinds of stuff. Right. So, so as an actor, you, you don't typically wear odd hats to interviews. But if you were a director, perhaps you would wear that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, your YouTube channel is, uh, is pretty big. Um, that's, that's one of your main um, outlets for creativity, uh, obviously. Um, yeah, yeah. Last year, I just hit 2 million views. So that was pretty big. There you go. Indeed. Uh, I think... Um, Yes, Warren, he's on. He, he got it figured out. Uh, thank you, Warren, the producer. Uh, uh, really the, the, the binding glue that brings us all together for the movie Coffee Breaks. Um, so he's, on, he's uh, the one keeping us all together here. So anyway, back to you, Aaron. Uh, you, two million views. And we're talking about on that one is your, that's your video game wizard. Uh, yeah. yeah. Hold on, I'm trying to get this up a little higher. There we go. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, it's a video game wizard. I own a video game store over in St. Pete. Right, and for those of us who are joining uh, maybe somewhere else, you're talking about St. Petersburg, Florida, of course. Yeah, 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 St. Pete, Florida. Right. <laughs> and so, uh, you, so you own the video game store there, which is really coincidental. Um, well, it's not so much coincidental for you and Warren, the producer of the film, uh, but uh, to also have video game stores, kind of how you guys met. But I also had a video game store. So the three of yeah, us. Yeah, he was telling you telling me about that. That's cool. Right. It's it's uh, it was something I had to do, you know, as a child. So so obviously, well, as a child, I mean, I didn't do it as a child. What I meant is that as a child, I've always wanted to do that. But yeah, your store, uh, you you do what mostly nostalgic stuff. Uh, so yeah, yeah. I mean, I do newer stuff too. But it's right now with COVID and everything, it's harder to get the the newer gen systems and stuff. Like PS fives are sold out even at like Walmart. You know, I can't really get newer stuff too much, but retro stuff I, I find on occasion. Is Cal is uh, I'm sorry, California. Is Florida pretty uh, pretty ruthless for stuff like that? Would you say it's um, uh, you know, as far as nostalgic video games go, because it's a huge industry, you know, everywhere it seems. Yeah. In California. It's in the area, area, in the area that I'm at, it's it's hard to get stuff because there's like probably a thousand people trying to do the same thing. So, like, you'll show up to a garage sale five seconds after somebody else came and scooped everything up. Right. <laughs> that's, the, that's the California way, too. Um, although the guy who buys it in California will just sell it to you right there in the driveway of the yard sale. Uh, he doesn't even care if the owner's watching. He'll make 15 bucks on you and, you know, drive away. He doesn't even care. So, California is, yeah. is about flipping it for sure. <laughs> So, so back to your YouTube, uh, some of the people who, who want to know, um, you know, let's talk about uh, some things like, like for you, how was it that you went about building a following? How was it that you, uh, you know, got as an, as an artist yourself, uh, you know, as, as an actor, um, 
YouTube personality, I guess you would say. How do you get your works distributed where you can, where somebody who's watching could maybe want to hit 2 million views? How, how, how can you, you know, what, what can you do to help somebody like that? I mean, I started my channel way back in 2005. Um, uh, fresh out of high school, I thought that it was going to blow up. I thought all these great things were going to happen. And then I, would, I only had like 35 subscribers. It wasn't until a friend of mine, Scott Squatch, is what he calls himself on YouTube. His name's Scott. Um, he, he, uh, he goes on tour with Korn, and, I, and he also does like Halloween videos and all this other stuff. And he started coming to the flea market that I, that I used to set up, that Wagon Wheel flea market. And he would start filming videos about buying and selling video games. He called it video game sellers. And his channel went from nothing to like 40, 50,000 subscribers. And then I got some of his subscribers that they, they latched onto my channel. I was making content, you know. And the next thing I know, I had like 70, I think I got 7,100 subs. Wow. So what you're saying is it's, it's much like the acting business. Um, it's really about who you know. Um, yeah, ex exactly. Right. So you had me at that guy was on tour with corn. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, 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 yeah. 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 Sometimes, sometimes people will think he's actually in the band. He's a stagehand for, for monkey. I think he's the drummer. Yeah. You, you know, know? I, I've seen corn and I know they have, you know, names the the, the, the characters have names, I guess, I, I, you know, for me, they're, they're all different names, but <laughs> um, I never, I don't know which one is which. I know Fieldy is the bass player and I know, you know, Jonathan Davis is the singer, but the other guys are all interchangeable to me. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Right. So I could mistake a stagehand. Um, in fact, I've been at a concert and probably cheered for many a stagehand. You know, there's the guy who walks out with the guitar and you're like, oh my God, is that them? And then you're like, oh, that's not yeah. them, you know? <laughs> so I, I wonder how stagehands feel about that. Like, they must be like, oh, these people don't even know who the band is. Like, you know, so you're playing Brad in Coffee Breaks. And yep. how much do you know about the script? Because not everybody was given the full script. Um, you, you know what I mean? Like, the, script, the script I was given was 84 pages. So I don't know if you got that's the, the full, full script. You did. Then you got the uh, full yeah. script. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm in like a couple of shots. And I, I, I messaged Warren one day because I also play piano. And I thought it would be cool because he said there was a bar scene in there. And I thought it would be cool that I could be the one playing the piano in the background of one of the shots. And sure enough, he shot that over to him, assuming the other people. And they said, sure, fine. Right, right. So, yeah, he, he told me, he goes, you're, you're in the bar scene. And then I was like, oh, my God, what bar scene? And I had to go back. <laughs> and, and I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. I'm, I'm in that scene and, and didn't remember it. Um, so you saw the scene then where you get eaten by the dinosaurs? Uh, no. no, I'm just playing. That's not, I just, <laughs> that's just to see if our audience is paying attention. So, uh, okay. So one of the other things uh, you also do on the YouTube back to that, cause that's a, that's a big thing for you is the YouTube thing. Tell, tell us about the Kasharski's your show. Um, it's a show I started right after, right around the time I had gotten married. Um, I, 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 I wanted it to be like a reality show, something similar to like maybe a Duck Dynasty or a Keeping Up with the Kardashians, you know. So a high so, class so, show, you mean? Something of well, real caliber? <laughs> no, 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 no. It's definitely not high class at all. But it's just it's like a reality show. I film whatever I'm doing, and then I add interview clips, you know, of like my family, where they're explaining what was going through their head at the time, or if we're going to Texas on a vacation, because a lot of times, we go to like game conventions in other states. Like I've met the game chasers, uh, Boogie Two Nine Eight Eight, Alpha Omega Sin, uh, Angry Video Game Nerd. I got his autograph on a shirt at one point. You know, so I know I know a lot of people in the gaming universe. Right. That's that's which is your which is your main forte. So you were you were planning to film the show and then it, you put it on YouTube. What what happened with it? Did it just not take off? What was your what what ended up going on? I mean, I did I did technically four seasons of it. There wasn't that many episodes in each season. I think it was like 12 or something like that. Um, but I recently brought it back because I hadn't done it in like two or three years because I took a little bit of a break. But I'm, I'm bringing it back later, later this year. I'm going to start airing episodes. I got like four or five already filmed and a couple of them are edited together already. So that, that's kind of exciting. But 
I don't know if anything's going to happen on the back end of it, but who knows? Maybe I could show it to somebody one day and it might actually go somewhere. Right. I mean, you never know, especially, you know, with coffee breaks, uh, the talk of, you know, that getting, uh, you know, picked up for, for much larger distribution. Um, you know, a anything could happen on the back end as far as, you know, projects are going on and, and, you know, those kind of things. Uh, so in Florida, di did you have any, you know, alligators on your show? I, I <laughs> like, is that a uh, No, no, but, but um, I have an aunt that lives down in Miami. And every time we go to visit her, there's like a long stretch of like hundred mile road called Alligator Alley. And they had to put like fences on both sides. Otherwise, you'd be trying to drive down the street and there'd be an alligator crossing the road. Right. Because they're pretty much everywhere. So they couldn't just move the signs, tell the alligators to go down a different part of the road? No. <laughs> Very cool. So I saw that our, uh, the writer is here. And, uh, you know, what a fantastic script it is. I want to give a shout out to uh, uh, Tracy Simpson, who is the writer, a wonderful talent. Um, again, we were just talking about uh, the script and how, how great it is and how long it is, uh, which is a great thing. It's, we were only talking about the page number, so we both knew we had the full script. Uh, but uh, back to Aaron, tell me again, or, or let's, let's go to something else. You're, you're also a musician. Yes. And so you, how much of your music, before we get into some of the, because your music is a pretty big part, uh, of your life, right? I'm, I'm assuming it's a, it's a huge thing. Yeah. It's gone pretty far for you. Um, how much of it do you put into your films? How much of it do you put into your channels or of your own music? How much of that do you, do you cross promote? I mean, so, sometimes, sometimes I do like, uh, it just depends on the production. If I'm, if I'm trying to do something that's funny, it's like some of the songs I do are serious. Some of them are, I'm just joking around, you know, so um, it just depends on what kind of video I'm working on at the time, you know. And what kind um, of, what do you, when you say that, what kind of video, uh, like what kind of music do you do? Tell the audience, for those who don't know. I do a bunch of different things. I've done like a little rap. Uh, I've recorded me just playing different songs on piano, you know, I, pretty much all across the board. I've done several different things. Cool. So you're just kind of a, a jack of all trades. What instruments do you play? Uh, I mean, the only instrument that, 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 that I really, really play is piano. Okay. Right on. But, <laughs> or I guess technically I can play organ and xylophone too. It's the same thing. Okay. So any of those type of, type of things. Yeah. I was just watching an episode of Lost uh, with the kids and, and they, uh, there's a scene where one of the actors plays piano on a beach uh, well, obviously, it's on a beach. It's an island show. And uh, he's playing the piano in the water, and he's having this, like, flashback. Do you have any, like, thing you'd like to do as far as piano on film or, like, some kind of crossover? Like, is that something you think about? I, I maybe. The farthest I've ever gotten with my piano work was I got a gig a long time ago. This was, like, I don't even remember how long ago it was, but we went to... Um, they were doing like some gala event where the meals were like $2,000 a person. It was like all the rich people from like a couple counties North. And I got, I got to play piano while some girl was singing in front of one of the Florida senators. So that was kind of cool. We got, we got, we got to go for free. You know, I got paid like a couple hundred dollars or something. I forget what it was, but that, that was pretty cool. But some girl was singing. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't, I don't remember her name. I forget what her name was. So, <laughs> the, like, this, this was when I this was back when I was in college. So this would have been like '05 to '08, somewhere in that range. So '05 was like a big deal time period for you. That's when your channel started, and that's when you were, you know, yeah. around college. And so that was really when you launched a lot of stuff. So uh, one of the things you had mentioned is that you started your channel in '05, and so clearly you've noticed that it takes a long time uh, to get somewhere you know, especially in this business. I mean, it's not like an overnight thing. Yeah. You know, I know Warren was telling me he's been at it for, you know, a long, a long, long time. I don't want to call Warren out, but he's, he's been at it. Uh, um, <laughs> some of the comments we're getting on this are cracking. Me oh, up. God. Yeah. Oh God. Uh, somebody just asked if, if I eat, if I raise these goldfish for food, because they're so big. Uh, no, but here's a fun fact and I'll derail the conversation briefly. Uh, these goldfish are carnival goldfish that my children won throwing ping pong balls 
into little bowls. Uh, I'm sure they have those by you, Aaron, the carnivals where they, the little bowls and the little colored dye and yeah, you throw them yeah. in, you win a goldfish, right? So my kids, yeah. my kids won these two. And then that little white fish you're seeing right there. Um, well, we're raising him for food. No, I'm kidding. He, uh, he was given to us by a neighbor and actually there were three of those and two of them croaked and that guy made it. <laughs> so, uh, that's all they do is get bigger. And, and in fact, uh, my cat turned 19 years old today. Uh, wow. So, yeah. So we're raising animals here to live. How, uh, you know, how many years is that in cat years? Uh, something like 7 billion. Wow. Yeah. yeah cause, cause me and my wife's dogs like 10, 11 years old. And I know, and I know that's like 70, 80 something years and dog years. Yeah, yesterday I saw this thing about 420, and it said when Snoop Dogg is 60 years old, he'll be 420 in dog years. So, <laughs> I, yeah, so I'm guessing the cat is somewhere around that. Um, yeah, you know. I, I was actually hoping they were saying that Dogecoin was going to skyrocket yesterday. I have like 10,000 coins. I got them like when they were dirt cheap. Yeah, so <laughs> so cryptocurrency, that's something, you, that's something you're into, or just Dogecoin? I mean... I, I've been using Robinhood a lot, you know, trying to save up some money. Right. So, okay. So recently, were you part of the GameStop? Uh, you're a gamer guy. You, you obviously, that must have been like, you must have been like, oh my God, I've made it during that whole GameStop thing, right? Like, I finally can I, retire I actually, and just play Nintendo and Atari the rest of my actually, life. Actually, it was the exact opposite. I actually lost a shot at $45,000 because I bought about 100 shares of GameStop a couple of years ago when they were two to three dollars a share but they were closing all their stores and going out of business and all my friends were like you need to sell you need to sell all your shares you know GameStop's going out of business and i did sell them for a profit but i sold them between like six and seven dollars a share and then a few months later right they went to like 450. well thank but, god that didn't happen with my blockbuster stock whoo <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, there's still one location left in Bend, Oregon. Yeah. So, you know, I, I lived in, in Bend. Um, well, I lived in Redmond, half hour from Bend. And I lived there for years and years, right? And uh, over a decade, that's where my children are born. Like, I, I, I almost say, you know, a quarter of my life I lived in Oregon. And everybody is like, oh, my God, this Bend store. Like, it's some, you know, it's an amazing thing. Like, I have to go there. I have to see it. And no, it's not. It, dude, <laughs> it's it's like this junky the, the only reason it's still there is because it, they literally had nowhere else to go with it like like they were just like it's closed or don't and they hung on like tooth and nail it's not this like amazing triumphant place it smells like well maybe they fixed it you know what it's wonderful if anybody wants to go there <laughs> uh, it, you know it, let's just say it's uh movies make things more exciting than they are uh yeah you know what i mean like uh it, it, it's a it's a movie that i saw it uh because because people have been telling me you got to see this block the last blockbuster and i'm assuming you're talking about you saw the film right the, yeah the movie, yeah. The, yeah i saw the movie on netflix yeah right I, I mean you're gonna get brian posane to come in and talk a, reminisce about a vhs tape Dude, Brian Posehn talks about anything. You're going to be, I, I'll listen. Exactly. Right. So that's what I'm saying is you can, they're reminiscing this blockbuster. I assure you, man, it's a janky old video store. Like, it, and, and it's actually funny because when I open, I opened my game store the same month that blockbuster shut all their stores down. The uh, blockbuster that I, that I, that I bought all their shelving units from closed October of 2013 and my store opened Black Friday of 2013, so November, the very next month, I, I opened and I bought all their stuff. So I got all their shelving units to store the games on and stuff like that. So what you're saying is you put Blockbuster out of business. That's what I heard. Yes. Right. Yes. So the movie should have been about you. I bought out a few GameStops too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, so at my video game store, uh, I, um, one of the, the other local store ended up going out of business and I didn't put them out of business or anything. Although I, I took a fair market share. Um, but you know, they, they went out of business on their own and then GameStop popped up in our town and everybody acted like it was this like great Messiah. 
And, you know, and all they would, right, yeah, yeah, you're right. And all they would do is come to me and go, oh, GameStop offered me nothing. I'm like, yeah, you should have come here first. Like, you know, and it was like, so, but it, it but still like convincing people of the mindset that, uh, you know, shopping independent is, is, you know, safer, better, whatever you want to call it versus, you know, GameStop that sure. Okay. I, I guess if you have to have the newest, hottest title, then you have to go get extorted by GameStop. <laughs> I, uh, I yeah. guess right. So if you're, if extortion is your game, I, I feel you. you. I saw a guy trading in a stack of like forty Xbox One games one time for one. Right. Yeah. You know, and, and I'm not feeling that. You know, for me, I, I never did people like that. I, I never would. I ne I didn't want to be you know taken like that myself. Let's talk about movies that way, right? So uh, when we're talking about a movie that's that's a large movie. You know, everybody on the planet right now wants to talk about, you know, Falcon and Winter Soldier or Mortal Kombat, um, you know, but uh, they're often... King Kong versus Godzilla. Oh, King Kong versus Godzilla, exactly. Yeah. Which, which, don't get me wrong, I see all those things, you know, but, but you don't see me pumping those things on my, on my page. You know, I never go on there and go, oh my God, King Kong Godzilla was the best thing. You know, you know even though, yeah, I, I watch that stuff, you see me promoting independent stuff you know, to, to keep it, you know, and that what we're doing here. I mean, this movie, yeah, this movie is a Hollywood, you know, potential, you know, huge, big, but, but, but as far as we're concerned, it's, it's independent level, you know? So, so what do you find as far as, you know, the biggest movies versus, you know, supporting independent and balancing it, you know, again, I don't, I try not to shop at Walmart, um, right. you know, but what am I, you know, there's, a, you have to balance it at some point you have to go to Walmart. Yeah. Yeah. Walmart makes it difficult because they have everything you can get other places, but cheaper. So that, that, that that's what put Kmart out of business. There was a Kmart, uh, in my town that just closed down last year. They were hanging on by a thread for like 30 years. And then finally they just decided to close, but Sears and Kmart used to be bigger than Walmart, but Walmart put everybody out because they, they were just cheaper on everything. So at one point, Kmart was considered the cheapest, but then they got saddled with being um, like cheap in a bad way. Like, like, oh, right. are you wearing Kmart? Oh, is that the blue light special? Like, it was almost like yeah, that. exactly. Right, right. You remember that? So people, how come, people would make fun of people for for buying their clothes? So how come that didn't happen to Walmart? I don't know. Walmart somehow came off as like, I don't know if you ever remember watching Happy Days. It came off as like Fonzie. You know, everybody thought it was cool to shop at Walmart for a little bit. And then over time, they just slowly started sucking up all the other, all the other companies. So you, okay. So you think it was part of like the, the like you think when Walmart came out, it looked cool to go there. Yeah. Like, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some people might've thought it was, because I remember right before, Kmart went out of business by me. They started to stop selling video games. And I remember that a video game at Walmart would be, let's say it was $59.99 or $49, whatever the brand new price was. The same game at Kmart would be $5 more. It would right. be like $64.99 or $50. And just that $5 was just enough to get people to be like, no, I can get it cheaper at Walmart. Why, why pay the extra five bucks? Right. So, but they didn't. Uh, uh... They they didn't get saddled with that same stigma, the, the same sti you know stigma of being um, associated with like you know oh you shop at Walmart you're considered like like thoughtful, but versus like you shop at Kmart you're considered cheap, like I you know what I, I yeah. so what happened there yeah. I mean, you know it, I mean, I have no idea right and at what point did at what point did Walmart jump the shark like. Was it, was it when they added McDonald's or was it when people at walmart.com came out? Like at what part, at what point did I Walmart? Mean, <laughs> I remember when, when Walmart first came in my area, there was a regular Walmart, but then out of nowhere, they added something called a super Walmart. And that's where you can go to like, they, they had like food inside, like a subway or a McDonald's or something. You can get your hair cut, you can get your car work done. I guess, they just made it to where no matter what you were looking for, you can get it done there. I think that's what they were trying to do. I remember that. But at the same, right. At the same time, when they do that, they tend to put smaller businesses out of business doing that. So, right. When they added the eyeglass center, when they added the banks, when they added all that stuff to make it more like, you know, when it became super Walmart, really, 
they just put a cape on a regular Walmart? Is that when it became super? Essentially, yeah. <laughs> so you are playing a techie in the film, Coffee Breaks. Uh, I want to give a shout to the writer again, Tracy Simpson, and to director Matt Sly, uh, and to Warren Madden for producing or, or putting this all together, how, whatever Warren's job is. But uh, tell us, you're, you're, playing a, you're playing a techie and a coworker of mine. Uh, what, do you, what do you think about it? And, and how does that relate to your real life? I mean, I mean, I haven't read like the entire script, but I mean, so far from, from what I've read, Brad's like the friend that's supposed to help, you know, in certain situations. Um, and that in, in real life, I relate to that a little bit because you could ask any of the friends that hang out with me if they're like, oh, hey, I need you to go do this for me or help me with something, you know, I'll usually try and help them if and when I can, you know, unless like I'm stuck at the store or working or whatever. But for the most part, you know, so the character fits. And uh, another thing I noted, uh, one of the lines, I'm playing chess against the other guy. And it's funny because I'm actually really good at chess in real life. So it, 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 it's like it was writ wrote just for me specifically. That's a, yeah. So that's a, that's I was going to ask you. The other guy is me, um, by the way. And yeah. uh, <laughs> and uh, um, I was going to ask you. You play chess in real life, then? Yes. And, I mean, I don't play like professionally, but I used to play a lot when I was in school, and I, I got pretty good at it. Right. And I, I don't think it's too much of a spoiler to say that you go on to beat me. Uh, you know, in the in the movie. <laughs> That's why I thought I was reading that into my head, like, oh, this is this is hilarious. Yeah. So, because because the, the truth is, is you likely would beat me. I know how to play, though. I I, I do play chess, and and I well, yeah. I okay, I've played. I, I'm not again. I'm not like a player. I used to know this guy who traveled with a business card, and it was like, yo, if you want to play chess, we will do it right here, right now. Like, um, you know, like. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not like that serious. Yeah. But. <laughs> Right. Uh, in, high, in high school, there was, a, there was a kid at my high school who was the second best in the entire state at speed chess. And every time we would play with that clock, he beat me. But any time we would slow down and act, I'd actually get to think about my moves, I would actually beat him. You know, so I'm not really good at like fast thinking moves. I like to, you know, sit there and try and figure out what I'm doing. Right. It's amazing how much time, uh, how much pressure the time can put on you. Um, you know, like in an audition, uh, when they got to have the audition like tomorrow, for some reason, it, it like makes me go really tense, you know, and almost like I can't do it, oh, yeah. you know, and then if but if they're like, it's, it's, it's weird, it's almost like if you're auditioning in front of one of your close friends, and having a conversation, you could do it no problem. But when you're in front of a director, you know, and you got to be spot on and you get nervous and butterflies, you know, right. But I think that happens with everybody. It's usually, I don't usually blow that until the second audition, you know, or the callback. That's when I'm usually like, okay, now let me throw everything out the window that I know and do it horribly, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, back to other movies, the chess thing. And uh, what do you think about movies? You know, there's, there's chess scenes in a lot of films, uh, you know, like there's one in Star Wars and there's other things. And usually it ends up being um, metaphoric in the film. So, you know, what, what's your take on that? I mean... Yeah, um, I don't know why this popped into my head, but my dad used to watch the old Star Treks with uh, Spock and Captain Kirk. And there was an episode where Spock was playing chess against himself. And I guess uh, the game didn't end the way he wanted it to because it wasn't like a logical outcome or something. He was trying to beat himself. And I think it ended in like a tie or something. And he said that he should have won. And I, I forget what the, what the storyline was for that. But they tried to tie it in with, with, with the storyline of the movie or the, the TV show at the time. Right. So uh, now that you mentioned Star Trek, I'm sure Warren is like freaking out. He's probably like, oh, my God, that's this episode. I love that episode. It's the one where Spock, you know, goes shopping for yeah. groceries. And that's why he fights himself because the red kryptonite. So how many, when you're attached to Warren's projects, you get attached to many projects. How many projects are you on? <laughs> is, that I, is that happening for you? I mean, well, one, possibly three. I don't, I don't know. I don't, like, like this one for sure. And then there's other stuff uh, that he's saying that, that, that I'm going to get from the back end of this that we're going to work on as well. You know, I mean, I'm, hope, I'm hoping that this, makes, that this makes me busy because I would rather, I would have much rather 
been an actor getting paid to do something that like I mean it's it's not that I don't love video games I do but you know I'm I'm sitting at the store every day I got to be here for the hours you know you know I would much rather go travel places and get to like like we're going to Colorado to film a movie or going to New York or wherever you know right it, it, it's exciting to go on to go places like that it is exciting right and you know that's one of the things right so being self employed a lot of things come with that. You know, we're, as actors, we're independent contractors. We can, we can sort of do whatever we want. But when you have a brick and mortar or some kind of inventory, you're really tied down to it. And, and I felt that myself, too, which is why I ended up, you know, closing my stores. Um, you know, because I just couldn't. I, it, it wasn't making me happy anymore. You know, as much as I loved it and, you know, and all that. And it actually, when I closed, I sort of, like, like moved away from the whole video game thing and, and distanced, you know, myself from all of that, just because I, I was like, you know, I don't know, almost grieving, moving on. I, I'm not sure, you know, what you would call it when you, when you close one career of your life and, and then move on to something else, say acting, um, you know, which is, which is what I did, which is what you're talking about. It's, it's scary, you know, and, and Warren's talking about, moving to Colorado because of a studio to, to make the films that we're, we're talking about. Um, are, has he talked to you about the project with that character that we don't want to say any names, but you know, that one guy who's an alien who lives here now. I mean, do you know about that project? Uh, does, this, does this guy happen to move really fast? He move, he can move really fast. Yeah, he, he does. That. Okay. Then yeah. Yeah. Yes. And, okay. And, and so you, you're involved in that project. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm actually, I'm actually hoping that, that that one goes down, too, as well. Right, and so I think that's uh, again Matt Sly, a uh, director of Coffee Breaks, is on in on that project, and uh, you know that kind of stuff. So, so tell us, uh, we we went back. Let's go back to your music. We didn't mention it, but I want to mention it. You auditioned for America's Got Talent. Yeah, it's America's Got Talent is weird. I've I auditioned. The first like ten years, I auditioned almost every year. You either have to be Mozart, or you have to suck really bad to get on TV. <laughs> I found out. Well, no, they'll they'll intentionally let somebody through that sucks really really bad. A couple times, I thought about singing um, one of my original songs that is is just really horrible, but it's one that's got the most views. I got a video on my YouTube channel called "Be True to Yourself," and I'm actually trying to sing like a pop type song. And I sound like a cat getting ran over by a car, but somehow it's got 60,000 views and all the likes in the world. I don't know how that happened. That's, yeah, that's remarkable, right? Like, so you either have to be awful or you have to be, like, unreal. Right. And every time I'd go in, they'd say, okay, well, we'll call you, which is code word for we're not going to call you, just go home, you know. But there was one time when I was in there, Instead of them telling me that they would call me, they had me sit in the chair right by the door. And they're, they're like, hold on a second. We need to discuss something. And I'm like, oh, God, this might have actually went good. And then like 10 minutes later, the guy walked out. I was like, okay, never mind. We'll call you. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, ah. Oh. Like they were actually discussing it for a second whether to put me through. Because I physically saw people that after they were in the first audition room, sometimes they'd get sent to a second audition room. And if you're sent to the second audition room, that's the room where you actually have a chance to get on television. You know, they, like everybody sees you go in front of Simon and the judges on like X Factor, American Idol and all that stuff. But there's actually a round before that where you go in front of the producers and audition before you even get to see the judges. You know, I went to one in Miami. Uh, me and my mom, my brother actually got to meet uh, Sharon Osbourne, David Hasselhoff and Piers Morgan because we, we went to a live taping. And they all pulled up in their cars, you know, they shook everybody's hand, they walked in, and, and they started watching some of the acts. So, okay, so there's a prejudging panel by the people with the money before you yes. get to the right. And, yes, yes. Okay. You go in front of the producers first, and then if they like you, then they send you through to, to, to the actual judges. And, and how long did you wait in line to get to the money panel. We're going to call it the money panel. I mean, it could take an hour. It could take three hours. You know, when you show up to these things, there's like people packed in the entire building. There's like jugglers, musicians, um, 
like anything under the rainbow because on American Idol it's not just about singers it's about or on America's Got Talent it's not just about singers it's about everybody so you know there could be a 12 an 8 foot guy on stilts in there or something you know right next to a clown you, you just you don't know what you're going to see when you when you when you go to these things so what is the craziest thing you saw personally like what was something you thought you saw and thought dude what am i even looking at uh well one of the people that they actually sent through and I, and i ended up knowing they sent this person through because they were on tv one of the seasons it was it w- it was it was a bigger lady she was all dressed up in this weird get up um her voice was not good at all <laughs> but but she was like she was like when she walked in the room it was like a presence you know like she she just had a personality and they put her through i'm assuming based on that they didn't care that she wasn't that good she they wanted her for ratings you know right. and, and and i think that's why, that's why they put her you know she she had a loud voice you know it wasn't necessarily a good voice but it was something that they knew that people on tv they were going to be putting up like exes or something you know So right exactly so one of the things that a lot of people don't understand is that um uh, it's a business it, you know right so it, it, they they what they have to sell is ratings so they want that factor that makes you know the parts where i watch and i'm like oh my gosh you know those things like like you said but personality is a huge thing on that show you know yeah so so you went on and and you auditioned for the the money panel almost got through um what was what what do you think was the most impressive act you saw not the not necessarily the craziest thing but what's the most when you saw something you were like no wonder they got through yeah well there there was a guy in front of me that auditioned and he he had a similar look to a pavarotti and he was doing like opera and he sounded amazing i don't know if he got through i never saw him on actual television but he sounded amazing And then another guy that I met at one of the auditions was remember American Idol had the guy that did the pants on the ground song? Yeah, oh my, of course, absolutely. I I I'll saw say. him in person. I saw him in person at one of the uh at one of the uh, America's Got Talent auditions. So apparently some people make a career out of just going to all as many auditions as possible and trying to get on. There was a guy um Piers Morgan hated him. His name was Leonid the Magnificent. He was on like seasons 1, 4, 5, 7 and he would come back every couple of years to try and get through and he would make it to the to the television rounds and he would get through but sometimes he wouldn't always make it past that first round of the live shows and so he'd keep coming back and Pierce hate he's like oh not him again cuz cuz he just knew he wasn't going to win and he thought he was just you know just trying to milk milk them for camera time Well, yeah, you know, I've watched America's Got Talent and there are people on there milking for camera time. But, you know, at, at what point uh, as an artist, as an entertainer, uh, you know, is it okay to milk for camera time? Is it always okay? Like what's your what's your thought on that, the camera milkers? I mean, I I I really I really don't know. I don't have enough experience to be able to give a, a legit politically correct answer on that. But, I mean, <laughs> I I mean if 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 you're if you're trying to become an actor you want all the camera time you can get so you'll do whatever I guess at some point but okay right so I was having a conversation with uh the, this earlier this week and the conversation came up of is there anything on film let's say that that someone could propose to you as a like you know um we want you we're going to shoot this ocean movie and there's a scene where you're in a cage with sharks uh you know I mean, i mean you're not in the cage with the sharks but you're in a cage and there's big you know great whites around you but don't worry you're safe we have pro divers there like i i still don't think i could get in the water like you know what i mean so is there any scenes you come up with like i, I would tell them that we're doing a green screen for that shot right or or get, or get like a stunt double so cuz uh, my, my my wife actually likes watching a uh, shark week and i think they put Shaq Shaquille O'Neal went underwater and he was in the cage with the sharks on one of the on one of the episodes that's fair because he he's like big enough to fight one of them i don't yeah, think yeah he's got a shot he's got a chance right he yeah he's like a superhero he could fight a shark i in fact there's the next movie shack shack shark the fight shack v shark yeah. one of the movies i used to watch as a child was Kazam actually coincidentally you know i don't know if you ever saw I, one I, 
I didn't see Kazam. I saw Steel, which do you remember when he was uh, Shaq played the superhero Superman Steel? A lot of people don't know he was that character. I vaguely remember that. I don't know if I. I mean, that was a long time ago, so I don't remember if I watched the whole thing or not. But I do. I remember what you're talking about. Right, but Kazam was like his biggest movie. He was he was a genie. Yeah, I didn't see and that. He actually, he actually made a um a rap album, I think, called Shaq Fu or something he like did. that back in the day. Shaq Fu, because for a little bit he was a member of the Fushnikids when they were doing um, well, they had that big song, uh, Lash Move. And, and and the reason I know about that is because on Scott's channel it was he was notorious for breaking copies of Shaq Fu on the Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo. He would autograph them and whatnot because that's commonly known as one of the worst games ever. You know, I recently just beat the one that came out on the PS4, and then Sha and, and Shaq's like uh, Shaq Fu. This time we didn't fool it up. <laughs> A Legend Reborn, or so I forget what the name of the new one was, but and and you liked the second game of Shaq. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the first one was essentially kind of like a Mortal Kombat, uh, one person versus the other one, but it wasn't it wasn't done very well. The new one, obviously, they weren't going to make, you know, something like Red Dead Redemption 2 out of a Shaq Fu game, but it was definitely better than the first one. And, and you're willing to admit that in public on tape that you liked a Shaq video game? <sighs> I mean, kind of, a little bit. I'll give it like a six. Right. As an actor, you have to be willing to embarrass yourself. So you just might as well say you love the Shaq game. So yeah. <laughs> did you ever play the Jaws game where you have to go and eat people on Xbox? On the NES? Oh, on Xbox? Yeah. Um, I don't know if I played that one specifically. I probably played the NES copy of Jaws. The NES one was a little different, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so mostly, mostly what I had growing up was Nintendo, Super Nintendo, 64 game. And it's funny because Nintendo came out in 85 and I wasn't born until 87, but we could never afford the newest system. So in the early nineties, when Super Nintendo was the newest system, I got, I got a Nintendo because it was cheaper. And then when the 64, I got the suit, you know, I was always like a console behind. That's always been my thing too, uh, console behind because I never was willing to, spend that kind of money um even now i just got a ps4 instead of the ps5 because you know i i called sony and i said is it really worth it and the guy the guy said no he said buy the old like, man. Ten, like 10 games for ps5 right. 10 or i don't even know how many there are but there's like thousands for the ps4 by now exactly so why why yeah and so and for me it's you know it's the newest upgrade it's great and i love it you know uh so let's let's go back to a few more things uh Tracy wanted again to point out that you are playing piano uh, in the bar scene, um, which we talked about, but uh, Tracy wanted to mention that. Um, and I see that we're getting the, the list of the worst video games ever made now, um, but the Atari uh, ET is on. Hey, hey Greg just joined. Hey, Greg. <laughs> uh, a, lot of people, a lot of people are joining this that, that, uh, that know me from YouTube. That's where some of those comments were coming from earlier. There you go. There's the video game comments. And uh, yeah, so that makes, a, that makes a lot of sense. The, uh, some of the strange comments we got <laughs> last time. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Excuse some of the comments. I, I also, I, I have trolls on my channel as well. They're not, they're not all. <laughs> you know, with any, any level of celebrity status, uh, you get um, some trolling. You get, you get the, the haters, you get the trolling. Uh, to me, I always, I'm always thrilled by that. I, I love it. Um, I, I, like I said, I figure it comes with the territory of being, uh, you know, part celebrity. And, and when I say celebrity, I, I mean that like with air quotes. I'm, 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 yeah. I'm like known in the Bay Area. How about that? You know how you're like, you're like known because you have a channel and stuff. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, yeah. Every, every pawn shop, through any place that could possibly have video games in all of Pinellas County knows who I am pretty much, you know. And then the few people that watch me on YouTube know me from outside of here, but for the most part, you know. You're the legend of Pinellas County. I mean, I wouldn't say that, but, but I don't know, maybe. <laughs> you're, you're like that guy from Pinellas County. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah we'll, go, we'll go with that one. Somebody commented and put E.T. Atari. Okay, okay, fair point. I guess E.T. 
is supposed to be the worst it's of supposed the worst to be, games. But you know what? I, I played it anyway. Um, I, but if you take off, there's a mode you can take off the, the guy who comes and rips you off. You can take off the FBI agent. And then you're able to do the game. And, you know, I was a kid. I was like seven years old. What the heck did I care? You know, <laughs> E.T. running around, it was good enough for me. So uh, what do you personally collect? We touched on that um, with Warren before. He collects lunchboxes and some things, you know. Um, I mean, I used to have a rather expensive collection because um, I was going for the entire Nintendo 64 set. I had all 296 games. I had boxes for most of them. I had, like, all the different – I had Rob the Robot in the box for the NES. I had all the different varied Nintendo systems. There's actually a video on my YouTube of my store, storage tour, and I got everything laid out. I got all the different color 64s. Most of them were in the box. The only two boxes I didn't have were, like, the watermelon one and then the, the gold one. The gold Toys R Us exclusive um, box went through the roof when Toys R Us went out of business. So I, did, I, I didn't want to spend all that money, and, and finally I just decided to sell it all. I'm like, I got a game store, and I'm, like, hoarding the best stuff for myself. You know, uh, you're not supposed to get high in your own supply, if you will, I guess. <laughs> right. So, uh, Tracy, no one remembers Zork. <laughs> I never heard of Zork. But, uh, yeah, you know, that's one of the things about being self-employed and having a collection is that you some days have to eat. So the, some of the good things come out of your collection to, uh, to you know, fund some other things you want to do, like eating, uh, which, you know, which is always a big deal. Um, we don't have a whole lot of time left, so let's go back to the film. Um, again, uh, written by Tracy Simpson, directed by Matt Sly, and you play Brad, uh, computer tech, who works with me, uh, Michael, chess player, um, probably avid video gamer. Uh, clearly, you know computers. Do you know computers in real life? I mean, you know video games, those kind of things. I mean, I, I know a little bit about computers. Um, I mean, I, I probably couldn't, like, code a computer. I took beginner beginner uh, computer coding in, in, in college, but I, I didn't really go anywhere with it. You know, that, was, that was just an elective that I had picked just to fill up my uh, – my credits and stuff like that. But no, I'm not, I'm, I know my way around a computer. Like I'm really good with Mac. That's what, that's what actually got me into this whole industry. When I was in high school, uh, I took TV production cause I needed another elective. And I was the anchor for my high school uh, news program every week for like two years. You know, that's when I'm like, Oh, you know what? I wouldn't mind being in front of the camera. This, this, this you know, it felt, it felt comfortable and natural, you know? So that's, that's when I started uh, started going to uh, the local college, SBC, and I was taking, like, all the video editing classes um, and all that kind of stuff. That's really cool. So the high school, uh, your, your interaction in high school is really what spawned you into getting into doing it, like, for real. Yeah, Get, yeah, yeah, because at, at, at the school I was at, they had uh, Apple Mac computers, and up until then I'd always been using, I'd been using Windows, and when I, when I tried to use, the first editing software I tried to use was Windows Movie Maker. And the second I used it, it was like probably the worst one I've ever used. So now I use Final Cut and the Mac and all that stuff. And it's, it's so much easier. Right. Uh, yeah, a lot of the editing software. So uh, we're getting a few questions too. So the movie is Coffee Breaks. And it will, it hasn't started filming yet. We're looking to film hopefully sooner than later, but uh, possibly, you know, within the year. And we are still in casting phase. And we are talking with Aaron Kosharski, who has a YouTube channel called Video Game Wizard. Is that, the, that's right. That's the name of your channel? Uh, well, the official name of the channel is Aaron Kosharski, my name. But you can, if you type in Video Game Wizard, it'll pop up. Okay. So, so that's yeah, where yeah, that, find you. Yeah, that's it. Oh. And if, if they want to follow you, is that the best place to do it on YouTube? Or do you have another place? Uh, I mean, yeah, you could follow me on YouTube. I have an Instagram. I have um, a Twitter. I have all that stuff. But, I mean, uh, YouTube is the preferred method of, you know, go comment on a video or like or subscribe or whatever. Right. You know, and I'm glad you mentioned that. Uh, likes and videos and comments on videos really do help us as actors to keep our stuff, our, our, our work at the forefront really helps us to, to boost our rankings. A lot of people don't know that, that it helps us when they interact on our posts or on our videos, um, that it helps boost us in, and you know, which hopefully leads 
you know, to our career getting more seen and taken off, you know, in a good direction. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, question: Would you mind if I posted this on my YouTube? Oh no! Of course, that's that's what it's okay. for. Yeah. I'm, okay. You should. We talk a lot about video games. Uh, you know. So yeah, no, that's that's what this is all about: is uh, is good natured promotion, um, getting to know the actors, and uh, you know, from the film, um, and directed by Matt Sly, written by Tracy Simpson, Coffee Breaks, uh, and uh, you know, we got a lot of a lot of good people coming on to it. Um, We've got John Lair, who, uh, as you know, Aaron, I'm sure, uh, he's the Geico Caveman. Um, most known. Yeah, most yeah, that's what everyone was telling me. I was ex I'm, ex I'm a little excited about that. Yeah, that's it. everybody wants to meet him. It's pretty, it's pretty good. Uh, I'm going to hopefully be doing this with him pretty soon. Um, his schedule, obviously, he's a, he's, he's a very desirable guy. To, uh, so, yeah. um, you know, hopefully we'll be getting him on soon. Um, I think we're talking about Liz Fletcher just got cast, at, cast as, excuse me, as Alicia um and the script and i think she's going to be on next week so we got a lot of really big things coming up uh no it won't be filmed in florida actually we just got that question we're filming this in colorado springs colorado that's where the director and the um equipment <laughs> are and uh but we're bringing talent in from all over the place um obviously i'm from california aaron is from florida so, uh, yeah. you know, it's uh, wherever, whoever is right for the role is what we're doing. And there's people from Los Angeles, you know, uh, big Hollywood names coming on. And uh, so lots of stuff, lots of, lots of good pitching. Aaron, give us a, a couple more minutes. Uh, give a promo for yourself, for your, for, I mean, we pretty much talked about anything, anything we didn't talk about you'd like to uh, wrap up on. I mean, I guess if you're ever in the St. Pete area, come check out my store. Uh, 5314 Seminole Boulevard, that's the address. Um, check out my YouTube channel, Aaron Kosharski, the video game wizard. Um, actually, did I tell you where I got that name from? No, tell us. By the way? Tell us, yeah. Did you ever see, I used to watch Wonder Years growing up, and Fred Savage was in a movie called The Wizard. Yeah. That's exact, that, that's where it came from. That, 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 that's where I got the name from. Wow. Because he, he was competing in a Nintendo tournament. You know, or his brother, his younger brother was, yeah. which was in California, you know. Yeah, I used but to yeah, yeah, for it. I love that movie growing up because I'm a huge fan of Mario and the whole thing was like a giant Mario 3 commercial, you know, so it, it worked out perfectly. And then when I op went to open my store, I'm like, you know what? I, li I like that name, The Wizard. I'm just going to call it Video Game Wizard. You know? There you go. That's perfect. My store was called The Hive because of Resident Evil. Uh, uh, the, uh, the, 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 virus goes loose in the hive and so that's why yeah. um and also we felt it was like a central location for everybody to hang out so um so what is the name of your store you, you video game wizard is the name of your actual store yeah not yeah. just the name of yeah, your, okay video, yeah video game wizard yeah that's the name of the store i i tried i had a guy that that um was doing a lot of my graphic work a while ago and he and he made me make it to where my instagram my facebook my twitter all my stuff like matched you know, so he said, just just put put these logos, you know, and now everything's pretty much all synced up. Right. Because before I was just like a little, it was a hodgepodge. Everything was like all over the place. He was trying to just, you know, tighten things up a little bit. Yeah, you know, branding is definitely uh, a big part. Um, you know, that repetition, uh, you know, like saying the name of the film, Coffee Breaks, you know, hopefully. Yeah, uh, Coffee Breaks. Yeah, Coffee Breaks. Hopefully that, uh, that's, that'll pay off. <laughs> Um, so Aaron, it's been a pleasure, uh, having you, uh, I'm glad I got to do this with you to talk to you today. Um, oh yeah, I had, I had a lot of fun today and you're uh, in Florida. Your weather is good. You're going, uh, is it always? Yeah. It's weird because in the winter, the rest of the country is like in the twenties or teens and we're in like the sixties and seventies, you know, but then during the summer, it's like 90 degrees here and it's really hot and sweaty and yeah. There you go. We're gonna end. But, we're gonna end on that note. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll see you guys later. Hey, Woo! everybody, check out the film <laughs> Coffee Breaks. See Aaron as Brad, and see me as Michael. We'll talk to you later. Thanks for being here.